alignment three, we are going to represent the active stresses, the passive stresses, and the net stresses. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is, although I made you calculate everything down below 65 all the way to 140, we are actually not going to use anything below 65. So we're going to cross that off. So you don't, have, don't need to do with any, anything below that depth. And um, what we're going to focus on is above that depth. Now, if you did everything correct in project assignment two, you would end up with active stresses that look like this black line. If you can see it here, it's a little bit... looks like that. And the passive stresses would also look like the black line over here. A little bit complicated. What we want to do is it's a little, you know, I, it's not necessary for us to work with all the little jigs and jags. We're going to make, we're going to, we're going to simplify that and we're going to represent that black line with other lines and I've laid them out here that are close enough for our for the calculations you're going to do. So we're going to have line one. This is line one. We're going to have line two. This is line two. We're going to have line three. This is line three. And then we're going to have line four, which is the net stresses, which will be this line right here. So what you're going to do is write equations for those lines. You all know how to write the equation of a straight line. So this goes back to your early days of uh, in high school algebra, where you know that the slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then you're going to use, um, you know, that y is equal to mx plus b. You're going to put that value of m in here, and you're going to put in, um, you know, y1 there, and x1 there, and you're going to solve for b. So you've done this a million times. And just a note, you could put y2 here and x2 if you wanted to, so it doesn't matter, but you have to make sure that they're the same. So y1, x1, or y2, x2. And you're going to get the same answer for b. So the goal, so once you have b, then you can write the equation, you know, y equals mx plus b. So your goal is to write this equation here. Okay for the lines that I've shown, lines 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, what you need to do to do that is to simply figure out what's point 1 and what's point 2. So, first thing I'm going to note is we are starting our origin here. This is our origin. That's at depth 0. And then, of course, you're at uh, x equals to zero. So here is our origin. If you look real closely, I've drawn little two axes there, x and y, right at that origin zero. So once you recognize that, then you have this point up here to get line one, to get line one, and then this point here that's going to give you line one, those two points. So the first point is zero thirty. And I've listed these over on, on this right here. So 0, 30 is, is right there. And then the second point is right here, which is 1,200. Remember, x goes first, 1,200, 0. So 1,200, 0. That's that one right there. So 
for line one, these are the two points you use. And you can call this one point one and that one point two. And then again, you use m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to get the equation of that line. Now, for line two, if we look at it, line two goes from this point to this point. And we've already identified this point here is right there, 1200, zero. This point here is going to be what? Well, it's going to be 5400, and the depth is negative 65. So it's going to be 5400, negative negative 65, so 5400, negative 65. So for line two, these are my points, 1200, 0, 5400, negative 65. I'm going to show you how to calculate line two here. So I'm giving you that one as an example. So example for line two, I'm going to use 1200, 0, which is this point. I'm going to use 5400, negative 65, which is this point. And then I'm going to write my, you know, the other way to write is m is equal to delta y over dex, delta x. So I'm choosing this point is point 0.2, this point is point 0.1. So I, again, I have y2 minus y1. So negative 65 minus 0, that's y2, y1. x2, x1, 5400 minus 1200. I get that m is equal to negative 0 0.0155. I then take that m, I put it into my y equals mx plus b calculation, and I get y is equal to negative 0.0155x plus b. Then I choose, I can choose this point, I choose this point, doesn't matter. But for this example, I chose this point. So I use x equals 1200, y equals zero. I simply put those values in. So y equals zero goes here. x equals 1200 goes here. And I get this expression down at the bottom here plus b, I solve for b, I get b equals 18.6 and that means that y is equal to negative 0.0155x plus 18.6. So I've given you that one. You only have to do one, three, and four. So you only have three left. <laughs> pretty easy. Like I say, this is uh, pretty straightforward. So Line three, what are the points for line three? Well, this one and this one. Well, what points are those? Well, that's, um, you know, the first one is zero, zero. That's that one. And then the second one is negative 23,000, negative 65. That's that one. So those are the points for line three. And then for line four, I have the net stresses, so line four is from here to here, and this point here is 1200, zero again. This point here is negative 17,600, negative 65. So, um, I've got these two points for line four. So, for line three, it's um, these two points. Line two I did for you line one, 
is these two points. Okay, so you need to come up with the equations. It's, you know, this is like I say, now that I've explained it, you now, you know, the goal here is to get the lines for each of these. And then eventually, you know, we're going to um, use the equations of the lines. We're going to use, for instance, this equation right there, line two. If I want to get the, the active stress here, well, I simply use, I simply use the, um, the equation to get that. So, we're going to rely on these equations to find values at different depths. Find values of the active and passive and net stresses at different depths. That's our goal. So, that's what we're going to use the equations for. So, the next page, you need to fill this out. And um, I just showed you how, you, you know, how to get 1, 3, and 4. I've already given you equation two, and then you're going to fill out this table here, and you're going to um, determine the active stresses in this first column. So here are the depths. And it says you're going to use line 1 and 2. Okay, so, well, where do we use line 1? I look at line 1. Well, line 1 stops at 0. So, um, we're only going to use line 1 for these two values of, of, of uh, y. So, this is line 1. And then for all of this down here, you're going to use line 2. So, I'm going to take this equation to get these values. I'm going to take this equation to get these values. And then the passive stress is line 3. So you're going to, all of this is line 3, all the way down here. So you're going to take this line to get these values here for line 3. And then to get the net stresses, you're going to use lines 1 and 4. Well, again, line 1 only goes to here. Line 4 goes to here. So you're going to use this equation for this calculation this equation for these calculations. And so you're just going to plug in those values to get the, um, the stresses at those depths.